Hello everybody, I hope all of you would have seen the save the date brochure or the promotional video of MAC 4.0 which is going to happen on 1st and 2nd of October this year that is 2023. So as we have started sending across this brochure, we are getting lot and lot of questions regarding various activities which we have planned, many of them being very innovative ideas which we are going to do for the first time during this conference. So a lot of questions so and they are receiving on their emails, on their phones and some people are calling them also. So we thought that it is it would be useful for all of us if we can take talk, on these FAQs. Yeah, and we can talk in detail about these sessions. But we also realize that there are so many different kind of sessions or things which we are planning to have an enriching experience for all of you that it will not be wise or it will not be good to take every topic and every possible, <laughs> and it's not possible also. So what we are going to do, we are going to have this kind of series where we will pick up one thing at a time from the conference and discuss all the questions which we have been getting related to that and give try to give you as much information as possible so that it can help you to plan your visit and your stay at Maripal. So the first thing, yes, which is close to my heart as I have talked about this in the promotional video also, the theme of this year is Go Global. And what we have done as a part of that, what we have done that uh, we are inviting or we are giving a chance to our international delegates who are registering for the conference to be with us for the following, following one week. week. Okay, and to see how we are doing our OPDs, our OTs, our patient management. Right. We call it Eurogynecological Observership. Okay, so um, this is for international candidates. Yes, yes. So what kind of questions we are getting? I thought we were very clear about it. Yeah. Ma'am, yes. actually everyone is firstly really, really excited about the Observership. Most of the queries that we are getting is yes, about, yeah, they are all about the Fellowship. So a lot of people are asking that who all can apply and what is the application process? Is there going to be an interview or an exam or something like that? So here I think we should clarify that in the Observership, primarily uh, it is for the international candidates who come for the conference. Actually, we also got many queries from international candidates from far and wide who wanted to be a part of the fellowship. But our institute currently does not allow that. So that's why we feel that the next best thing would be the observership. So uh, we would be first, we would be accommodating the international candidates for the fellow for the sorry for the observership. And if at all we have any slots available for the observership, then our second priority would be to take in people who have come and registered for the hands-on workshop. These are about the Indian delegates. Indian delegates, yes, yes ma'am. So first is all the international delegates. Secondly, we still have a few slots available in the observership. It is going to be the national delegates who have registered for the hands-on workshop because they will be better oriented to the kind of procedures we do in our OT. Uh, so why is uh, Dira, why so we're saying that they would be more oriented uh, to the uh, Ma'am, because, uh, because they would have attended the workshop, so yeah. they've seen how to do the surgeries. They've actually even uh, performed those surgeries on the pelvic models. So yeah. I think that, uh, it would be a good chance to do it on their people. Yes. Or, I mean, get to see us do it on real people. Yes. Yeah. So they, they are more close to that. Yes, yes So we are planning. It's no other reason. Yeah. But uh, uh, for this re very reason, we are giving them a priority. But let's see if we are, because we cannot have observership for many uh, yes, right. people yeah. and cannot give attention then later. So we have restricted. We want a tight knit group yeah, yes. that can see and everything. The, the opportunity will come in a stepwise fashion. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, when would be the earliest that our national delegates would know that uh, that they have that they have a slot for the observership? Okay. So all international delegates who are registering for the conference, they don't have to wait for the result. They can take it for granted that if they are coming here, we'll try to accommodate them for the observation. Yeah. Okay. So they can make their plans. No, ma'am. But I think we might cross the number. We I have hardly uh, maybe ten to twelve. We we can't have more than ten to twelve. But I think if people are traveling so far, we'll try to accommodate okay. them somehow. Okay. We'll increase the number of cases or do something. All right. Because uh, otherwise, if we tell them later, it will be very difficult for international people to plan their right. tickets and their travel and their holidays um, and so it will be very difficult. 
So that's my word, <laughs> that if you are traveling from uh, far off from some other country, we'll try to accommodate you for sure. If your, uh, your uh, time uh, is allows matches, you to, allows yes, you no? to come and do the observership, and take it from me that you will be accommodated for the observership. As far as national candidates, Indian candidates who have been requesting us a lot mm -hmm. are considered, we understand your emotions, but uh, you will understand this also that we are limited in our resources and our days, and um, it will give you maybe some other time opportunity. But if we have some slots which are left, and if we feel like we can accommodate you, we'll try to do our level best. And as Dira mm -hmm. asked that, when they will come to know, I think uh, we are in May right now. Yes, yes, yes maybe by September. September, definitely. The end of September. Yes, we'll try to inform you. So uh, keep on asking us. Be in touch, ma'am. Uh, we've also made a note for all the national delegates who've asked us regarding the observership that uh, that they would want to be a part of it, and we've noted down their names, their numbers, and their email IDs. So as soon as we get to know, we'll get back to you. So uh, expect by September that you yes. get. So ma'am, what is the, they all want to know that in this one week long observership, what is going to be the whole program? Okay. So uh, in my mind, I have made this observership for one week and uh, if we exclude Sunday, we have six working days. And in those six working days, um, two days will be dedicated OT. We will try to run two OT simultaneously, yes, totally dedicated to only urogynecological procedures. Uh, two days will be OPD where we see our OP patients. Uh, that will include all pre op, post op patients, all the patients who are uh, new patients. to us or new patients who come and seek urogynecological advice or treatment. They will tell what kind of investigation, how do we plan the management and workup and evaluation of those patients. So, all these things will discuss together or will be participating in patient management in one to one basis yes. during those OPDs. So two days OT, two days OPD and remaining two days will be uh, the academic sessions. So yes. they will do a lot of teaching and discussions and um, so many things. So this is the division in my mind yes. is like that. To give a little bit idea about what this usually uh, in our unit we have Monday and Saturday as, as our OT days, yeah. but this Monday being included in a conference, we we can't do that. So yeah. we'll try to manage exchange Monday with Wednesday, yes. and Wednesday and Saturday will be the OT days. Tuesday and Friday are our routine OPD days, and remaining two days will dedicate to the teaching of adults. And will they also be a part of the pre-op and post-op evaluation and management of the cases which will be operated? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, so we admit one day or two days prior depending on the morbidities of the patient in the ward. So yes, those people, uh, they can you can uh, take them or they can come for the ward rounds. Yes. Yeah, ward rounds and uh, discuss with them how do we do pre-op yeah. evaluation, evaluation of the patients and post-op care. I would really love if you are interested in seeing the post-op care, especially of uh, the patients who have undergone TVTO and TVT yeah. because uh, one of our unique innovative way of tape adjustment which is becoming very popular in many places it will be really nice if you all can see for the that. Wednesday cases they will be here yes. to see yes. yes correct uh, also ma'am uh, people want to know that uh, at the end of this observership will they be getting any certificate or something that they can add to their resume yeah sure um, so we will be giving a separate certificate one certificate will be for workshop and the conference and this certificate will be a totally different certificate which will be given just for doing the observation and especially important that if you want to get that certificate you should be involved in all these activities yes. that that's all what six we want. Yes. Um, during the academic discussions are there any specific topics that we will be discussing or will it be an open discussion? Uh, actually I was thinking that a lot of theoretical discussion we should not do yeah. and uh, I want it to be a one to one discussion and two way discussion mm -hmm. more so yeah. because we can um, understand what kind of problems you are facing in your country setup in your, in your country and maybe uh, maybe we have some solution for that yeah, yes. and maybe uh, listening to your problems, what you are facing in your place, that will give us also some idea 
and I want to make it practical discussions and whatever the house feels that mm -hmm. time. Yes, these right. are the topics that we have to discuss in more detail. We can do a dedicated lectures or dedicated discussions on that also. But I want to discuss more of practical issues which we all are facing. Right. Also, uh, a lot of people, ma'am, they are asking, what are they going to do in their free time and money fund? I you should tell them yeah. that there's going to be no free time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you occupied. Yeah. So, uh, let me tell you that usually uh, on our OT days, we only we yeah, come we get done really late. And uh, sometimes, most of the times, we go back at 7, 8, 9 p.m. Yeah. also. And so, it is, uh, you will be at least, and even if you go at 7 or 6 or 5, I don't think you will have a lot of stamina mm -hmm. to go on the days are not possible to leave at five. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe on OPD days and uh, the academic days, you can go and see places Explode. around. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that these people know more places <laughs> than we do. I'm here for a longer time, but they can tell you more places in campus and outside, outside campus. campus. But what kind of places uh, you would recommend them to go? Uh, so Manipal is a very unique student friendly town. It has students from all over the world. So it has a very unique vibe, a very friendly vibe. Mm -hmm. And it is so small, so green and so easy. Everything is so easily accessible. It can entirely be covered on foot. So that is one thing. the best part. Yes, it's, it's a very easy going place. And uh, in but if you are too lazy, you have the facility, you know, of, yeah. yes. <laughs> facility of renting a bike yeah. or renting a car also. We can help you with that. Also. Yes. And uh, there are many beaches in and around Manipal, uh, very close by, very beautiful beaches. And, and here you were telling of some. Yeah. Uh, and there are, there's even few blue flag. Uh, blue flag beaches, yeah, which are very clean, ma'am. They are beautiful beaches. Okay. okay. Uh, yes. And you told last time that there are some that bioluminescence, bio yeah, yeah. Uh, and yes, even small surfing courses. But for that, you will have to maybe stay longer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there is lots to do around Manipur. Lot of and local cuisine, cuisine. Also, yes. yes. Oh, food. You can even try no, the local no, cuisine. Because no, no. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the local cuisine, the coastal cuisine is something very unique. So you'll definitely yeah. enjoy that. Yeah. And if you are thinking that uh, if you don't like other kind of food, you there are all sorts of options. All yes. sorts of you will definitely. not we will not let you starve there <laughs> because it is uh, as so said that it is an international town kind of feel here. Yeah. And so everybody get, feels at home. Yeah, you get uh, all kinds of starting from Korean yes. uh, to Italian to French, every cuisine you will get here, very good Japanese and Asian flavors you will get here. So food will not be a problem. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. Any other question we have? Yeah, so these were the commonest ones that we had. If there's anything else, please get in touch with us and we'll be happy to help. And uh, I think uh, Dr. Sopriti and Dr. Deera are really working hard and all the time they are answering your questions. Um, and they will keep on doing this. <laughs> and uh, if there are more accumulation, maybe in the same observership topic, if we feel that a lot of questions have been accumulated and we need to tell about all this to other people also, we don't um, uh, have any problem in doing another, another session, session yes, for that. And I think for uh, this time, uh, we will end here. So, see you, see you at 4.0.